Inshallah for the blessed month of Ramadan inshaAllah and uh, Bab al-Rahmah and the mercy of the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad Alhamdulillah Allah inshaAllah opening now the gate of Maghfirah in which we described last night that if Allah opened for us the only way that we can enter into fasting and Ramadan and its immense oceans of Divine Grace is that Allah allows the servants to draw to near to the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad and that the rahmah of Allah dresses the servant and then enables them to fast enables them to accomplish God's grace, Allah's rida and satisfaction and as a result that maghfirah begins, jauka wa astaghfirullah wa astaghfirukum rasul in which Allah gave to us an ayat al kareem that, go, go to the presence of Prophet and in that presence ask my forgiveness. Because Allah wants the nation to understand the importance of the presence of Prophet that somebody comes and gives to you the Qur'an, gives to you their knowledge, gives to you all their realities, you don't take it and go. That Allah wants us and the nation to understand that your value as a nation and your value as a creation and your value to the Divinely Presence is your proximity to Sayyidina Muhammad And this is the, the gift that our Lord gives to honour Sayyidina Muhammad So that we know our value, our value is not in our individualness but our value is in how our proximity to the prophetic reality. And each nation to their Prophet and peace and blessings be upon them all. So we speak for the Muhammadan nation which is all encompassing of every nation that our value as a human being, as a community and as a nation is the closeness to our Prophet and how much we love Sayyidina Muhammad Not somebody who delivered the mail and we go off on our own. That whatever he gave to us of Qur'an. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream, every bit counts. As Salaamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. Qur'an is not activated without His Holy Presence. And those are all of the talks that we gave in the reality of encryption and all of these different modern understandings that now everything in life is going to draw near to the heavenly kingdom because God's kingdom is coming and God's judgment is coming. So that means all of the signs of Allah's kingdom are coming. So the tech people they're inspired by these jinn realities that pretty soon you won't be able to do something without your own identity card and everything about you is on that zip file or whatever device or phone device, whatever they want to put the technology on, it's everything he, about you and nothing is going to be activated without that proximity. All your wealth will be on that phone or on that electronic chip, everything about you will be based on that and these are just the symbols of, of the heavens. That Allah is giving to us that your value is not in your uniqueness of being yourself because that's what your nafs teaches you. 
isolate, be yourself, be with me, the nafs and then become very nafsani. But your value is your proximity to Sayyidina Muhammad that did you gain a nearness, a dearness and a, and a goodness and that's why the turuqs are the way. The way to what? They're the way to Prophet to teach us that we must have good character, we must have good manners, that we must have a, a loving nature because nothing of Prophet will accept anything but that nature. And as soon as the nature becomes wild then the nearness to Prophet is moved away. And truth and falsehood they don't sit together. We described that hadith of Prophet when he got up and moved away and described that as soon as shaitan comes that shaitan and myself we don't sit in the same proximity. So this is like a summation of everything of tariqah that our honour, our rank, the beatific fragrance that we endue is not a philosophical argument amongst people. No this is honourable, no that guy is honourable, no that way is honourable. But awliyaullah come and make a very easy summary, your honour is in your proximity to Prophet that's it. Someone's honour is in their proximity to Prophet If you want to see their honour, imagine how much of the character of Prophet they endue and embody. Because how can someone think that their proximity is close, they don't embody the same characteristics. That could be from shaykhs, from murids, from imams, from people anywhere in this Islamic world that we identify. You go somewhere and we've said before some of these imams screaming, some of the shaykhs angry calling people kufar, making judgments, making all these things. Some murids, whatever they do in life, it means everything is a sign for us and what Allah inspires and what Prophet inspire and awliya because they want to talk about the greatness of Sayyidina Muhammad is you always in, in, in put into your head is that would Prophet do like that? Do they exhibit the kindness and the khuluq because Prophet described that I've been sent on earth to what? Adam and Rabbi, Asanu fi tahdeeb. I've been sent only to perfect the character of people. But everybody seemed to have forgot that. And this one is kuffar, God forbid they say these words, this one is like this, that's one like this, everybody but judging this one is that like that. But Prophet said, I've only been sent to perfect character. By following divine laws, by following divine rules they're supposed to perfect our character. So it means that all that's important to Prophet is character. So when we want to judge ourselves and understand the proximity of others then we have to think how much of a Muhammadan character is being embodied. And that's why we call this the Muhammadan way. Not Nashbandi way, not the Rifai way, not the all these other name ways. Those are the schools that should have taught us the Muhammadan way because that's the only way that matters. Nashbandi is a school of shaykhs that teach you manners that should have made you Muhammadiyoon. Rifais they should have taught you how to be Muhammadiyoon. Mevlevis should have taught you how to be Muhammadiyoon. But people get wrapped up in the, in the name and not the degree. The degree was you were supposed to have graduated Muhammadiyoon. In which Allah khuluqul azeem, you are of a magnificent character. Allah didn't say you have an outstanding sharia, you pray amazing. Your nation they pray so amazing, we're, all of creation we're astonished by your praying. Allah has angels that do that. 
and they do it much better than us. Not your fasting is amazing to all of the heavens, all universes are astonished by the ability of you not eating for a few hours. But what Allah gave is khuluqul azeem, you are of a magnificent character. Now coming from Allah that must be immensely mighty, immensely mighty. And it draws our attention to this path is based on character. If what comes to you, you don't like it and you exhibit badness, you failed. That was the beginning of this journey on the month of Tawbah, then month of Surat Al-Kahf, what happens? That you throw rooks at the dog to exhibit good character. Our life is about rooks coming testing coming, uncomfort and uncomfortable situations to be put in. Things that we don't understand and we don't know. But the proximity and the test was to draw close to the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad And that is only achieved by the good adab and good character. So if anyone wants to think if they're drawing close to the Muhammadan character then that's the way to, to understand the tariqah. Then why are there people that you give salams they don't give salams back, you can't imagine that. That what part of Prophet was that? That how do they exhibit certain characteristics, how do people yell and scream and have so much anger? Even when they're giving a khutbah, these are not the characteristics, there's not a single example of Prophet like that. So that becomes in our journey our isharat and signs, you're looking all around for the signs. Say the signs of what's correct and what's wrong, what's adab, yahu. So tariqah would always say, ya adab yahu because the path is based on adab. That'll be our, I think our next shirts that come out, Adab Yahu. It sums everything. You can say you've memorized all the hadiths in the world but if you have no adab you're basically garbage. You can memorize all Qur'an in the world and it didn't change you to have adab then for what value? You, you could have given everything in life of donations and you have no adab means those practices didn't change the person to be what Prophet wants from them and by means of that they did not grow near to the reality. So our owner in the 15 days, only reason we were able to enter these 10 days of Ramadan, Allah's gift is to draw near to Prophet because his nation, they opened the gate. And Allah allows the souls of His nation to draw near to the presence of Prophet His rahmah dresses them. Blesses them <coughs> in my eyesight as we grow older in life. We used to be able to look at little phones, now our phone is this big. <laughs> the little, I can't see even with my glasses the, the little text. So now we got the, this phone the size of a laptop now. <laughs> InshaAllah. Then we go to Surat Al-Taqweer, the 81st surah that dressing the whole and the holy month of Ramadan. Imagine then the immensity of the message in Surat Al-Taqweer that Allah put at the position of the reality of the month of Ramadan in which everything will be laid to waste. That in the believer everything will be crushed, all of their dunya will vanish, all of of the heavens will disappear. This is all at the beginning a description of a state of fana. 
When Allah describes that the, the skies will vanish means your upper chest and your reality because every, every reality is not only on the horizons but within themselves. That within themselves Allah will make everything to vanish and as a result their heart becomes heated up when Allah describes the state of the sun in which the heat and the energy of the sun coming like on Yawmul Mashar and the Day of Judgment. Everyone has their own day of judgment within themselves. If they can meditate and reach to a state of death before death means it's like your day of judgment in which everything within the horizon of your inner being vanishes and that every, every inner fermentation and everything about the lights and the stars everything will collapse and as if your chest begins to open up and that you draw near now to the heavenly presence and the heavenly kingdom. Because as the journey is inside, the first parts of the journey you're looking and in and you're seeing your character, you're seeing all the rabs and all the lords that govern you of your drinking, your smoking, your anger, your bad character. You're not seeing Rabbi al-A'la, you see the, the, the Rabb who's the zalim. You meditate and you say, why I bothered that person? I meditate, why I said this to that person? I meditate, why I cheated this person? Why I took from this? Why I said from that? Those are the lords that govern people. And Allah describing in Surah at taqwir that you come to a state in which all of that dunya if you clean it will begin to vanish. And the, the ferment and the, the heavens of your inner chest will all begin to collapse and fall down in which nothing remains but the light within the heart means you're now entering into the heavens and into the paradise reality of your internal journey to the Lord of power. Every soul shall know what it put forward, verily I call to witness the planets as they recede, they go straight or they hide and as the night as it dissipates means their own fana within themselves everything in their journey will become darkened, everything becomes blackened as if everything has been like in a judgment day and collapses and that they have to enter into this oceans of light and the dawn as it breathes away every darkness, verily thus is the word of a most honourable messenger. InshaAllah we'll read from Surah Taqweer 81 verse 20, to twenty-four inshaAllah. Verse 20 to 24 inshaAllah Shaykh. A'uzu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem, bismillahir rahmanir raheem, dhi quwatin inda dhil arshi makeen, muta'in thumma ameen, wa ma sahibukum bi majnoon, wa laqad ra'ahu bil ufuqil mubeen, wa ma huwa ala al-ghayb bidaneen, sadaqallahu al-aliyul azeem. Sadaqallah al-Azeem wa barakat Rasul Kareem, innahu wa qawlu Rasulun Kareem. Verily this is a word from the most honourable messenger. Innahu qawlu Rasulun Kareem. When say, why Rasul Kareem and why you keep saying Rasul Kareem? They go, oh Allah is Kareem. No Allah is giving the title to Sayyidina Muhammad that if Allah is describing Rasul Kareem, is Kareem because he must be giving something. And that the immensity endued with power, with rank before the Lord of the mighty throne, waqawwatan in the dul arshin makeen. So means that in this horizon of entering into this immense oceans of power, Allah is confirming. That you're entering into the presence of an amazingly powerful messenger of Allah with a rank 
from the Lord of a mighty throne with authority therein and faithful to his trust. Muta'in thamma ameen. Muta'in thamma ameen. From ata muta'in means one whom is most ata, the one whom is most obeyed in this Divine the Presence. Because the month of Ramadan is the month of of Ghashiyah in which Allah will destroy every nafs and every dunya within the person as they're fasting. They don't even have to know it. All day long as they're fasting their inner reality has been taken into the heavens, everything has been brought down, everything been crushed. And Allah then taking the servants into the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad And that your companion is not seeing illusions and without doubt he saw him on a clear horizon. Means all of that reality of clear horizon and, and the Divinely Presence is about the Israhi wal Miraj in which Prophet gained the access of Qawba Qawsaini al Adana. Means the immensity of this month and the immensities of these lights in which Allah describes in Surat Al Taqweer is about the inner miraj of the servant. Means as Prophet went for the outer miraj with entire form and body and soul, Ramadan becomes the miraj of the believer in which they enter into their inner reality. And by the annihilation of al Muntaqim in which Allah avenges His creation against all the works of shaitan means that everything of their dunya like Yawmul Mashar when Allah describing on the Day of Judgment you're standing all of a sudden the heavens are collapsing, stars are falling, everything is, is collapsing. What you ever imagine for the Day of Judgment of everything collapsing? Because why? The kingdom of Allah is coming, how any of it's going to stand in the presence of Allah is the kingdom has to collapse. That's the inner journey also. That as we look in and we see everything we're thinking about is dunya, everything we think about is all the bad images we've been seeing all day. Allah says, at one point you're going to be meditating and contemplating and you'll have your inner day of judgment in which everything collapse and you see nothing it's just darkness. Whatever fragments of lights collapse everything collapses so that your inner reality enters a death before death like a judgment and that the heat of your heart begins to overtake you and become so heated with a luminous fire that you're entering now into the Divinely the Presence. But to know that that Presence is the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad where Allah describing for us that you're going into the presence of Rasul Kareem and that he, He's one whom is connected to the Divinely Throne, the Arsh al and that Allah's immense throne that might and that power and that authority given to Prophet the servant is drawing near into that reality. So means the first 10 days of Ramadan is a rahmah because that reality Allah gave to us to be near the presence of Prophet The second day in 10 days of Ramadan is maghfirah in which we spend the 10 days begging for Allah's forgiveness. That in the presence of Prophet making immense amounts of istighfar, asking Prophet forgiveness that what I did wrong from what you gave to me, what I did wrong of the light that you entrusted with me, I'm asking your forgiveness and that you intercede for me in presence of Allah So this is the time in which to ask for our forgiveness and know that 
our proximity and the nearness of our reality to the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad And everything we do in our life is ask ourselves, will that draw me nearer to the presence or farther away from the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad So we said many times in all our testing, whatever was coming because of meditation and contemplation and tafakkur merely connected our heart and asked Prophet what should we do? And always the answer was best of adab. This and this and this was done wrong in the presence of Prophet keep your manners, keep your way and keep your, your khuluq and your character. And with every test that comes is to act with the khuluq and the character and the love of Sayyidina Muhammad so that we can draw near to that light, draw near to the fragrance and the blossoms of the, the heavenly realities of the, the rose and Qul al-Muhammadi. Imam Ali Salam described even to have good character to the hand that crushes you. So like the rose that when you crush it, it releases its fragrance. This is the khuluqul azim that exhibit good character, that in the face of whatever happens in our lives exhibit good character. As soon as you leave the good character, you left the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad That's why no one else has to tell you what you've done is wrong. Everyone can understand what they've done is either right or wrong. If you had good character, you drew near to the presence of Prophet Not nahi wal munkar that you went and corrected things, that's a lie. Nahi wal munkar is that you corrected yourself, not other people. You correct only yourself, you work only upon yourself. And that our responsibility is to have good character. If we were good in our character, we drew near to the presence of Prophet If the character was not good and the character was not soft and loving, then they distance like a repelling magnet, it repels itself. Because truth and falsehood doesn't draw close. Can you imagine? So it's common sense. That you're in the presence of Prophet and you're doing things that are repelling and repulsive in character, do you think you're actually drawing near? It doesn't need anyone's interpretation, no you're actually drifting far away until it becomes so repulsive that you're completely out of that ocean and out of that orbit. We pray that Allah give us a, a mind to think, a heart to understand and to do our tafakkur and contemplation. So that it's all common sense, good deeds, good actions and to see good inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzati amma yasifoon. Wa salaamun al mursaleen wa hamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha. As Salaamu Alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. As Salaamu Alaykum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh.